Hey everybody, how's it going? We are streaming here from my uh, my brand new studio PC. Uh, well, it's not brand new, it's about two weeks old at this point. Uh, the first stream I did was the Pyre gameplay, which I had a lot of fun with. I know I haven't streamed it since, but uh, that was a really good game. I've been playing it. It's fantastic. Um, so we are back to our usual Tuesday night live stream of studio music production. Uh, we're here in Ableton Live, which is my usual DAW of choice for music production as far as uh, electronic music goes. Uh, if I'm if I'm making metal or recording a live band or something, I'll be in Pro Tools, which I have right here, of course. But um, for electronic music, which this will be tonight, I do stick to Ableton. All right, so... Uh, for tonight, I, I did have like a cheesy pop guitar riff that we might end up using uh, instead of this, but I, at the last second I was scrolling through my splice library here, and I, I happened upon this brass hit. Uh, this is really loud, so just watch your ears. Oh, come on. <laughs> that one, I love it. Uh, I've used it in a couple tunes before. It's always really nice. I, uh, I did hear a drum beat pop into my head kind of the second I heard that today. So I'm going to do my best to try to put that drum beat together right now. We'll see if that goes anywhere. If not, we'll end up back in the pop music territory. But this would be kind of like a uh, like a hip-hop dubstep thing. I, I have no idea where this is going. Let's see. Not entirely sure what kind of drum beat I'm looking for right now. We'll see. Or what kind of uh, drum set sound. All right, so we got our drum beat here. Let's kind of screw with the sound a little bit here. I want to get a real grungy, almost distorted kind of sound. I'm just going to loop this for a second while I get a feel for it. And I did just freeze and flatten that, which gives us this nice uh, just audio to work with. And this I can chop and cut up a little bit. So I, I might want to chop this drum beat up a little bit, play with the raw audio. We'll see. Oh, 
Oh, I don't have my battery samples on here yet, do I? Oh, that's right. Okay. Okay, so we're on a brand new studio computer, which means I don't have any of my samples added to uh, here yet. Let me figure out <laughs> where where I put those. One second. This computer's been great so far. It's really... Um, there you are. Ha, found it. Okay. Uh, the graphics performance in particular is ridiculous on this thing. I've got a, a, a GTX 1060 in here, which has been more than enough for any game I've been able to throw at it so far. Samples. That's what I was looking for. Okay, cool. Here's my battery samples, and now... Hey, there it is. And we all know my favorite kick from the Arena kit in Native Instruments Battery. All right, I'm not going to put it on every one of those kicks I gave it, because uh, there is going to be a little bit of interplay uh, between these different layers. I want them to be just a little bit different so they can kind of stand apart from each other a little bit. Let's get a snare and maybe a clap in here as well. I want that for my second snare hit. I'd like that to be unique. God, no, not that. <laughs> and let's find some good claps in my, here we go. That's terrible. <laughs> okay, just a classic. Cool. All right, that's sounding really great so far. Let me pull up Splice. There is a tambourine loop I usually like to stick in there too. Let me find that. Is that it? That's the one. Nice. This really nice halftime tambourine loop. Okay, I kind of actually like it being just slightly behind the beat. I did quantize it for a second there. If you look, I, uh, I grabbed all these warp markers and I hit Control U, which quantizes these. So they're always dead on the beat, but that kind of takes a little bit of the life away from the loop. So I left it in there. You can see it's just slightly behind the beat. Here's the beat and that's where the tambourine hits, but I like that kind of lazy feel. Nice. Uh, I want to see if there's any other... I feel like it's missing something. Maybe some kind of hand drum, bongos or something. Let's pull up... Uh, let me sign into splice.com here. And let's find... some uh, some loops. That's pretty promising. I kind of like that.
That might be what I'm looking for. I'm going to add that. Let's see if we can drop this in. Just something really subtle to add, add another dimension to this. Okay, see, I heard the beat as being in a different place here. I am going to quantize this one. notice that slap he has here and here lines up with my two and four and I like that let's see if this works there we go all right so now I can kick up the tempo a little bit Keep labeling my tracks here. That's kick, snare, clap, tambourine, and congas. We're going to group all of that into a drums group on which we're going to throw just a little bit of compression. <laughs> I do need to up the uh, buffer here just a little bit. Okay, let's see where that uh, that hit goes. I hear it on two, like this. Sorry, <laughs> muted, and I, I just realized it's also not two, it's the end of one that I hear it on. I almost hear it playing a melody. Um, we're going to dupe this four times. That's cool. <laughs> uh, so what I just did there, we have native, in, uh, yeah. not native, Ableton's um, transpose function on the clips here, and this is the this is the default pitch of this sample. Just this. Uh, I don't know what note that is, but um, she probably says in the title doesn't. Nope, doesn't. Okay, so that's uh, that's some note there, and I wanted. I heard this melody, bum 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 bum, um, so. For the note I wanted to go up one, I did up a half step and then down two half steps um, for the next note. So we get this bum, 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 bum. I really hear a slap bass answering that call a little bit. I don't know. Bear with me for one second while we see if this is a terrible idea or not. <laughs> Let's figure out what note that is. Thank you. 
That's too loud. Hang on. Okay, so it's an E. I'm going to turn off the monitoring in here in Ableton just for a second because there's crazy latency because I'm streaming at the same time. So it's, uh, yeah, uh, I'm just going to turn off the monitoring. You'll hear it through the mic a little bit, though. right there. Okay, I've got enough to work with. Right here. Let's see how that bass tone turned out. I wish I could have heard it. That's it. I got to get used to these Windows shortcuts. I'm going to use EQ8 here to kind of tease out some of these upper mids. And then saturator to make it way too loud, sorry. On second thought, Oops. let's bring alloy in here. Now, if you've seen my streams before, uh, Alloy is one of my favorite plugins. It uh, Alloy is a really nice all-in-one kind of Swiss Army knife of a plugin. Uh, right on the front page, you can see the EQ and the dynamics here, the compressor and gate and stuff. But it's also got a, a bunch of other stuff we're going to use as well. So let me get the same EQ curve I had going on there for a second. This kind of light, low, mid cut, and a little bit of a high mid presence boost. We're also going to throw a gate on this. And just a little bit of compression. Nothing crazy. Uh, but what I really want to use Alloy for is it has this exciter, which is really just, uh, it's a lot like Ableton's Saturator. Um, but this one can go multiband. So I'm actually going to just split this into two bands. We have our lower frequencies here, which is the base of the base, and our upper frequencies, which will be all the slap and the pop. So I'm going to grab kind of everything above around, I want to say, 200 hertz. Yeah, let's say 160, 160, 170. Uh, it's got a few different types of drive in here. I almost always use the tape drive. So you can hear how it's... We're, uh, when we dropped Saturator in there, we got this kind of farty, gross sound um, like this. And that's because all the low frequencies are getting uh, pulled into that Saturator along with the upper frequencies, which are what I want to actually saturate a little bit. So here I can just grab the upper frequencies while leaving our lower frequencies completely intact. Uh, here's the lower frequencies still perfectly just the way they were. So all together we've got that brings out the upper harmonics. Here's without it and with. It's kind of there, now it's not so subtle. <laughs> Good. 
Uh, so let's hear that in context. I can play with those uh, those notes. I'm going to chop it up and throw that around a little bit. Oh, where's my sound? <laughs> Ah. Man, I can't get this right. There we go. Much cooler. Okay, now we got to put something to answer that bass on the other side of this. Uh, it could be another bass lick. That's the direction I'm leaning in. Uh, the other alternatives could be um, know, some kind of melodic answer or a, uh, a synth. Since we were, I was talking about maybe doing something dubstepy with this, but now I'm not feeling it leaning in a dubstep direction. This is like a uh, this is like a really cool trailer music or something. I don't know. Or, I don't know, title theme for some video game. I don't know. I'm really not sure exactly what uh, what use case this would have, but I am leaning towards answering that with another bass lick, so we're going to grab the bass again. I should really put the bass closer to me. Something simple, pentatonic. I think that was good. Man, is there so much lag on this that it's... And my input buffer must be really high. Um, that's frustrating. So uh, something I'm dealing with right now is getting audio from Ableton into OBS, uh, which is really hard <laughs> on a PC. It wasn't easy on a Mac either. I had to do this thing with uh, Soundflower and route audio all around. But this is uh, this was proving to be even trickier. Uh, even just getting my mic to go over discord because i was playing uh some some borderlands with a friend and it was it was like impossible to get my mic to properly <laughs> go through the system uh so routing audio in windows and in and around windows without the benefits of core audio on the mac has been really difficult uh so i'm running with a crazy huge input buffer you can see uh 850 samples it's, so it's 17 milliseconds which doesn't seem like a lot but that's enough to really screw up a bass lick, as you just saw. Um, if anybody has any suggestions as to how better to route audio from Ableton into uh, here, other than using some crazy third-party workarounds and stuff without much latency, that would be super cool to let me know. But, uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Close. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. Stop it.
Okay, let's use uh, complex warping. You never really want to use beats uh, unless you're, I don't know. It, complex always sounds the best. I don't know why anybody would use anything else. Um, okay, that sounds good to me. Cool, so there's our bass part. This will be the foundation of our groove here. Cool. Uh, it's like a, it's kind of reminding me of, um, by reminding me of, I mean, I'm totally ripping off uh, Battle Without Honor or Humanity from uh, it's that song from Kill Bill. You know the one. Uh, I was going to add some strings to this. Let's see what contact has for us. Actually, I have some kind of cool ideas for how we're going to mix these strings in. Just get a standard string ensemble, and they are going to play some really stupid, simple chords. Just that. <laughs> Like I said, nothing crazy. <laughs> but I think we're going to have some fun processing this. And let's work on the velocity for these. It doesn't need to sound, you know, incredibly realistic, but I would like a little bit of back and forth to that. Hey, Victor, good to hear from you. I'm sorry, your internet's acting funny. Uh, I hope you hope you come back soon. How's everybody else doing tonight? See, I got a few vi few viewers here, but I have yet to hear from anybody. Feel free to ask any questions in the chat or just say hi. Okay, so here's what I had in mind. We'll see if this is a silly idea or not. Um, I'm going to sidechain the kick drum to the strings, which is nothing special. I shouldn't be proud of this at all, but I just want to hear how this sounds. Yeah, let's hear it in context. Sounds kind of weird on its own. Oh, I have an idea for where this goes next. And again, it's nothing original. I shouldn't be proud of this, but I hear. Can I get a count in? Yes, please. <laughs>
Why can't I close splice? <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. I don't know. Maybe this isn't as great as I thought it was going to be. All right. We'll see. We'll see if that works. Uh, for now, let's stick to the first half of this progression. Let me scroll. There we go. Oh, it's control scroll? Okay. All right. Um, okay. I also hear, um, maybe we could just do this with a pad in here or something. Just a simple high noise pad. Yeah, let's see if this is usable. And I would like this to last. So we're going to turn sustain up. Now that'll just kind of hang there. Uh, the one thing I haven't installed on this computer yet, uh, which I, I keep meaning to, uh, but it's going to take like a whole day to do it, is the uh, the Arturia synths I have, you know, especially the Profit, which I use in like everything, I feel like. I've been kind of lost without that. Okay, that was the most annoying sound ever. We're going to turn that down. <laughs> and I'm going to copy in this uh, sidechain compressor. Actually, you know what? Let's just group these guys up. This will be um, pads. I'll call strings a pad as well. That compressor is going to jump out to the group channel. And now... Is there like the this panning effect going on or something? Yes, there is. I don't like it. This is one of the Ableton devices I do not know that well. This is analog. Uh, I used operator quite a bit when I was I was learning Ableton and stuff. I really love FM synthesis. Analog does not make a ton of sense to me the way it's laid out. So you'll you'll see me fumbling around with it on the occasions I find myself using it. Okay, so let's hear that back in context of the groove. I hear where that's going, and I actually want to move this over here.
Oh, it sounds so cool. <laughs> I might actually leave the reverb on for that. I had just turned it off. But. Let's see what Sforzando sounds like. I want it to last a little bit longer. But still have a really nice attack. That's nice. So that's going to come in in this uh, this second half here. Here's what that's going to sound like. I don't know about that last half. Yeah, I'm not liking that noise pad. I'm going to get rid of that. Change my mind. All right, I really like where that's going. Seeing if any uh, any of these other samples I have here give me any inspiration. Hey! Obviously, some kind of bass instrument needs to come in here. I'm leaning towards Serum. I think I've actually tried to run Serum on this computer yet.
Okay, uh, kind of zoned out for a second while I was fiddling with knobs. Just to show you what's going on with this sound, which I'm not even sure I'm, I'm going to like in the context of the music, but I do like how it sounds. I might use it for something else. i um, just going to walk back all the pieces of that. So I've got a very basic super saw going on here. Uh, I did turn on a little bit of portamento, a little bit of glide between notes. So here's with the portamento, you'll hear a slight little pitch shift right before the note. Now I can make that really drastic. I have it, I have it kind of subtle at 35 milliseconds. Uh, then on top of that, I have another octave doing the same thing, just an octave up from that note. Already that sounds really cool. Uh, you'll notice these are just simple saw waves, the sawtooth waves, which is literally just the default waveform serum hands you. I could use any of these, you know, million uh, wavetables it gives you, but I am just using the default saw wave. Okay, uh, then I feed those two into this filter. Uh, I'm going to bypass the modulator for a second here. Um, So there's what the filter's doing. I have it automated uh, with this envelope. Every time I hit a note, you'll see it play through this right here. That sounds cool, but it sounds kind of techno-y. Uh, and this is not like really a techno song. I know I said dubstep early on, but this is not going in that direction at all. Uh, so I wanted kind of a grungy sound, so I added some distortion. Serum has a great built-in distortion. I flipped it over to the diode one setting, which is a nice like distortion pedal kind of sound, and I really cranked the distortion. You can see here it's like almost all the way up. And that sounds great. I just wanted a little bit more movement in there, so I added a phaser, which on its own would sound like this. but uh, behind the distortion. Just kind of messes with the sound a little bit more. So that's how I put together that synth sound just now. Uh, let's check out that in context, see if this works. I don't know. <laughs> But I do like it. I'm going to save that sound for later, in fact. Uh, sounds kind of Trent Reznor-y, too. So I, I labeled it a Nine Inch Nails kind of saw. All right, let's, let's hear what we got so far. Uh, I am going to have this brass play along with uh, negative four, and then negative two. Oops, not 
one. Okay, uh, one more thing I want to do right now is uh, I'm going to throw a high pass filter on this horn because you can hear it's, it's really acting as the bass instrument right now, and I'd rather it didn't do that. Uh, I'd rather be able to control exactly what the bass line is at any given time, even if it's not this thing, and I'd like a consistent bass sound throughout this. So we're going to throw a high pass on here. Cool. What is that sound at the beginning of that? Has that always been there? Ew. <laughs> let's uh let's clip that off with a transient shaper. Yeah. I don't like that one bit. Uh, I'm going to get Alloy's Transient Shaper. Uh, I have Neutron. Okay, I have Neutron. I don't use it too often. Uh, I know it's really just the nicer... Oh, yeah, I know. It's in my... Come on. Thank you. I own this. <laughs> um. Oh, jeez. And it's in the... mid and <laughs> Is that really doing anything? I guess it is. Okay. I know we don't really hear it in the context of the song, but it bothers me on a deep level. We're going to up our buffer size a little bit more. I am going to look into why my computer is doing this. Good. Okay. And then finally, to make up for the fact that we just removed the bass instrument in the song... We're going to add an instance of Massive, which is kind of my go-to sub-synth. And this is kind of my usual recipe for my sub-synths. It's just one sine wave. I have the sine square wave turned all the way to sine mode. An octave down, another one at the octave I'm writing. You'll hear it there. Uh, and then finally, on top of that, try to have kind of a subtle decay to it. Nothing crazy. And then finally, just a little bit of the classic tube effect. I'm going to mix that in. There we go. Uh, and now I'm going to just play in MIDI for this entire line here. Uh, let's see if I can actually play this live, huh? I think I got mostly close on. It's really hard to tell with the uh, the latency on this thing right now.
Okay, that is pretty much it. That bass line there. Let's hear that in context. It's fun. I like that. Uh, I'm going to throw a little bit of a master effect on there just so we can really get a feel for how this sounds. Let's see how my computer likes this, huh? Here we go. like that. That's fun. <laughs> right. I think uh, I think I'm actually going to call it there for the stream tonight. Uh, I've only been doing hour streams lately. That's that's all I really um, seem to be able to pull off right now as far as coming up with constant material for a song. Uh, but we're having fun with it. I feel like we came out with something really good today. And uh, I will be back same time next week on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Uh, thanks to Victor for saying hi. And I hope to see you next week. <laughs>